Hey guys, welcome to the AFI Movie Club. I'm Sean Edwards, your host for this week's celebration of cinema called Black Stories Matter. This is a partnership between AFI and Universal Pictures, and thanks to them, every movie this week is free for rental. And today's movie is one of my all-time favorites, Get Out. And we're talking to the producer of Get Out, Jason Blum. Jason, how are you, my man? Excellent. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. No, I'm, I'm glad you could join. Hey, before we get started, I mean, I have to tell you this because it, it happens so seldomly. Get Out is one of the few movies I've actually watched during my professional career where I got a chance to see it and didn't know a single solitary thing about it. Ooh, I, was, you yeah, I, I was sitting at work. I got a call from Jeff Gear at Universal. And he's like, hey, man, I got a movie you really have to see. Because sometimes they hit you up and they show you movies so you can give them advanced feedback. So he's like, I got a movie I want you to see. I'm like, sure, um, let's do it. So he set me up at an AMC like at nine in the morning. Because you got to watch it before the, you got to watch it before the multiplexes open up for the real people to watch movies. Nice. I'm sitting in a 250 seat house. I know nothing is about to happen. And on comes Get Out. And my life has never been the same. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. I didn't know what to expect. I'm in this completely dark auditorium. That's and I'm great. watching this movie and I'm like, okay, Jeff, payback. <laughs> payback, <laughs> payback is real. But no, it was just it was one of the it was one of the greatest experiences of my professional film criticism career. So thank uh -huh. you for that. Thank you for joining us here at AFI. I, I can't wait to jump into this. So my first question for you, Jason, is what does make horror so special and what makes it so relevant? Uh, what makes it special is I think, you know, especially here, you know, on a Zoom, it's like one of the one of the one of the few, there are less and less collective experiences. Of course, not right now, but they'll be back. And I think um I think the the feeling we all get of being scared together in a big, you know, in a big dark room. Now, you you didn't happen to have any friends when you were there. You saw it by yourself. No. <laughs> it wouldn't be better with an audience. I went, I, back, I went back and watched. I went back and watched them for audience. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yes. Um, but I think that uh, I think that feeling is just a, a. It's a feeling that we kind of need and crave as uh, as human beings. Um, and. Uh, and I think what makes it, you know, one of the things that make it relevant and what one of the amazing things that Jordan did with Get Out and he, and he I wouldn't say he started a trend, but he, he got, he, he reignited interest in the horror movie as a delivery system for a social message. You know, that's been going on a long time. John Carpenter did it. People have done it throughout the history of cinema, but, but it, no one thought about it for a while. And Jordan did it as well or better than anybody else. And he, he put a movie, you know, about race into the shell of horror. And so, so it was so fun and so compelling and so interesting and also had a message. And that was, a, that was an amazing thing that he was able to do. Do you find the being African American as more advantage or disadvantage in the modern world? It's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Hey. Yo, my man. They were asking me about the African-American experience. Maybe you could take this one. Oh. Well, well, I find that the African-American experience for me has been, for the most part, very good. Although, I find it difficult to go into detail as I haven't had much a desire to leave the house in a while. <laughs> <laughs> We've become such homebodies. Yes, 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 but even when you go into the city, I've just had no interest. The chores have become my sanctuary. Get out. Sorry, man. Okay. Get out! Yo! No! Yo! Chill, man! Get out! Chill! Get out! Chill! Chill, man! Get out! 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 Get out!
underappreciated because like in the last five years, you legitimately have had like a few performances that definitely deserve some like Oscar consideration. I mean, look at the cast to get out. I mean, Daniel Kaluuya was like amazing in that movie and you had Tony Collette in Hereditary and you had uh, Lupita Nyong'o in Us and Jordan Peele with these masterful screenplays and the brilliant direction. Why aren't these movies garnering any awards? Why is this genre still underappreciated? Well, get out to pretty much. Jordan won uh, won an Oscar for that one, so not 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 bad for writing. Um, um, so I think they're starting to become part of the mainstream, much much more than they ever were. I think okay. um, the fact that again hard to talk about it now because it's not true now. But when when as when theaters were still being attended and as they're going to be attended again. You know, if you want a theatr if you want to make a theatrical movie as a director, you kind of have a you can make a tentpole movie, you can make a superhero movie, or you can make a horror movie. Most else is on streaming, so I really do think that the the trend is is um, going in the direction of looking at horror as a real genre that needs to be recognized and can win awards and is as hard to do as any other genre but there are always going to be people who will say like ah it's a bloody movie and it's gross and i hate it nothing we can do about that in fact that's why we love horror because some people are reviled by it that's a great point that's a really good point all right i'm gonna take you and put you into your way back machine how did get out fall into your lap it fell into my lap. It was like a lot of the movies that, that we've had success with, you know, the, the script had been kicking around and, and no one was responding to it. And, and I read it, um, two people brought it to me kind of at the same time. Someone heard uh, Jordan talking about it on a podcast and another friend of mine had read it, worked at another company and said, uh, called me and said, my company's not doing this. You should check the script out, it's great. And I read the script and I, I loved it. Um, I didn't understand a lot of it, but I, but I loved how new it, I never read anything like it, you know, and I didn't love that. And then what really sealed it for me is I had a meeting with Jordan. And after that, I said, we have to make this movie. I mean, he had such a clear point of view. He had thought about every word in that script so much. There's a lot of nuance in the script. Um, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things that are really tough, and and obviously the it's a movie about race, and and I and I wanted to make sure that I was comfortable talking about race with my filmmaker, and we right away did. You know, I, I tell you a funny story. When he sat down, um, I said, "Hey, you know that scene? Like, is that true? Like, if you're at a party and it's a lot of white people and there's like two or three black people, do you like really acknowledge that? Do you're like, hey, like, what's up? And he was like, yeah, we do, <laughs> and um. <laughs> Yes. And I remember, I remember, you know, that just was struck by that. Of course, I'm not in the opposite situation. So like a dumb white guy, you know, it wouldn't occur to me, um, or very rarely in the opposite situation. And, uh, and we had a lot of conversations about race that were very open and, and, and easy for me to have and um, easy for me to listen to. I can, I can't, you know, I can't understand a lot of it, but I can I can hear it and I can talk about it. And I need to, ha to have a partner who was comfortable doing that with me. And um, and I really found that in Jordan. Did your conversation sort of change over time as you continue to discuss the film during this progression? Oh yeah, they change all the time. And obviously the film is about, a, you know, race is a part of it, but it's also gotta be super scary. And we had to cast the movie. I, I, I uh, and we had to, um, you know, figure out where we were going to shoot it and how we were going to shoot it for very little money. We made the movie for four and a half million bucks. So, so there were a million things that we talked about. You know, race was one of the many, many, many things that many conversations that we had along the way uh, in the march to getting the movie up and uh, up and running. Now, this was Jordan Peele's first job as a director. What surprised you most? You know, people say it was his first movie, but I don't think that's really fair because he wasn't a typical first time director in that he did more than direct. You know, he, he, had, he, he had, his show was on the air for five years and he starred and wrote and he, he just, he created that show and wore so many, produced, he brought so many different hats. So although it was his first time as a film director, he was incredibly comfortable in the role. Um, and you could tell that 
you know, from the first day of prep and then we were on the set, like he was totally, <laughs> he was a first time director in name only. He had no traits of a first time director. He wasn't, he didn't overshoot. He wasn't, he knew exactly what was gonna wind up in his movie. He knew how to make his days. He knew where to spend his time on, how to spend his time, where to, where to choose to spend his time. He was incredibly decisive and also um, listened. You know, none of those things are first time director, traits of a first time director. So, so he was a first time director, but really a name only. Now you talked a lot about the conversations you had in the pre-production process. What was the experience like after your first viewing of the actual film? After our first viewing, well, I'll tell you one thing that we did. We shot the movie in Alabama, but we were intending to shoot in Louisiana. And right before we started shooting, we lost the rebate or something. And, and I had to call Jordan, like it was Christmas day or the next day. And I said, you know, I have some disturbing news. You know, we're, we're not gonna be able to shoot the movie in Louisiana. We're gonna have to shoot in Alabama. And back to the first time director thing, if a first time director would have had his head, their head would have exploded, like couldn't take the information. And Jordan, he was super nimble because he did so much work in TV, kind of took it in, took a deep breath and we got to shoot in the movie in Alabama. Um, I was going to ask, was that intentional to add to, you know, sort of the, the racial tension the of the panel? Or it was, was that it was. No, it was practical, but, uh, but it certainly added to the air of, the movie being, you know, it hung in the air because we were in Alabama for sure, but we didn't do that. We only did it for practical reasons. It was the best place to shoot in the in the United States at that time. Yeah, yeah for, this it, movie, for this yeah, movie. Yeah, right. It just adds something to it, though. I, for I was, sure. I, I sure. it, made it, even, it made it even creepier, for sure. Yes, 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 for certain. Now, talk about something that's just really, really important that doesn't really get a lot of credit in the filmmaking process, which is the casting. Because for all intents and purposes, there, there, there were no stars. I mean, probably the most known person of the primary characters would have been what, Catherine Keener? Yeah, probably Catherine Keener, Allison Williams from Girls. Daniel was, um, I think, Jordan's choice very early on, maybe from the very beginning. Where did he find him? Because he was such an unknown. Gosh, you know, I don't remember what... what okay. uh, Black Mirror. Uh, uh, he wasn't an episode of he wasn't an episode of Black Mirror, and I've yeah, I've read right. I've read some stories that Jordan watched that episode. Yeah, that's but right. I mean, it was. but but so much goes into the decision of casting. I mean, it was I mean when you go back and look, everyone seems perfect, but yeah. it's a really hard process. Yeah, well, that was really you know a hundred percent Jordan. Part of our model is that we don't you know we we tell the directors they they don't get a lot of money, but in exchange for that, they really have complete creative freedom. So the casting, final cut, you know, he, all that stuff was up to him. We're like, I was, we were his cheerleaders. Um, but Allison, we, Allison, I, I think I recommended Allison cause I just was friendly with her and Jordan uh, loved that idea. Um, and we reached out to her and she, you know, she was brave enough to do it. And, uh, and then yeah, Catherine Keener, um, um, these were just, they were actors that, that there were a few other, I, I, you know, some parts we reached out, there were a few other actors we reached out first to, who I've all heard from and they are very sorry they didn't say yes. <laughs> I um, bet. <laughs> um, um, but, uh, but, uh, but, but Jordan put together, I think, you know, a great, one of the reasons the movie works so well is that cast is just so good. I mean, they feel so real. It all feels so real. You're so scared. <sighs> you think it was your fault? How do you feel now? I can't move. You can't move. Why can't I move? You're paralyzed. Just like that day when you did nothing. You did nothing. Now, sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. <laughs>
here at AFI, it's, it's all about collaborating. So we're going to bring on an AFI producing fellow who actually has a question for you. And she also has some history with your company as well. So I think it's only fitting that we bring on Rachel Weitz to ask her question. Oh, good. Hey, Rachel, what's up? Hi. Hi, Jason. Good to see Hi, you. How are you? You're, 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 is, that your, is that your house that you're in right there? It's my parents' house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not my house. It would be a good, it would be a good, be a good, be a good, house. Be a good <laughs> horror movie scene right there. That looks Right, sick. yeah, I staged no, it. That bookshelf <laughs> looks, looks like there's a secret door behind that bookshelf. Uh, there actually is. Oh! It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a closet. I know. I know. There's a reason. I come from horror oh, wow. movies. What can I say? I, I, know, I, know my, I know my secret doors. You do. You certainly do. No one's clocked that before. <laughs> um, so I have um, I have a couple questions, but I don't want to steal Sean's thunder on the ending. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my alternate question. No, no, Rachel, we'll do that. We'll do that one together. Cause that's a okay. big deal. We have to do it. Is a big we'll do deal. it together. We'll do it together. We'll do it together. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll start then, I guess. Um, so I wanted to ask about the ending of the film because my understanding is that it was different. Um, that Chris, the protagonist, actually got arrested at the end in the original ending and um, that it changed. And I wanted to hear how that process came about and what made you decide to change it. And given that Jordan had Final Cut, what, what that process was like talking to Jordan about it. Yeah, well, we screened the movie. I screened the movie, I guess, alone first, and then we screened it for, we did a test screening of the movie. And, it, you know, I just felt like the air came out of the, the room. That, that, that Daniel, Daniel's performance, he, he he's so likable in the movie and he's so um you just get you know you're just on his side you're just rooting for him in such a profound way and i just when the movie ended i didn't i didn't um i tend to be very direct and i just said jordan you can't end the movie like this i think i waited till we weren't in front of the audience i said you can't i said you're betraying the audience like you you've 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 got us all on this ride, which is so hard to do. If you pitch that movie to someone, which is why no one made it, everyone would say, that's ridiculous. Like you can't make a movie about that that anyone's gonna believe. And, and Jordan did it. And I said, you succeeded too well. Like you did your job too well because you can't, you can't, you can't put Daniel in jail after this. And, um, and he looked at me, you know, and made a funny face, Jordan. And I, I pitched some horrible idea of what the end of the movie would be. And then Jordan went away for a couple of days and wrote what is the end of the movie, which was a million times better of a version than the version that I had, uh, that I had said to him. And, uh, and we, he liked it and we liked it. And it was, um, and that's the movie, that's the, that's the ending on the movie. And it, 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 sh it goes to show, you know, it really illustrates for me that when you give up creative control, that doesn't mean that, you, you don't, the directors are more likely to listen to you because ultimately if Jordan had said, hey, you know what, I heard it, I shot this other end, I like my end, we would have had to have gone with that. And, um, and the fact that he was, uh, he was willing to collaborate in the way that he did with Final Cut really, I feel like, you know, shows that, uh, that we have a system that, that, that in some cases works pretty well. To piggyback on Rachel's question, though, was there ever a conversation about whether or not to provide the alternate ending when it was released for home entertainment or just keep it a secret and for no one ever to see? Yeah, oh, yeah. That, well, that was all up to Jordan. You know, we wanted okay. to put it on there and uh, and uh, and we asked him if he was willing to do it. And he was he was generous enough to say, OK. So, yeah, it was up to him and he decided it was OK. So we did it. I will agree with you though. When I watched that original ending, it made me feel very weird and sad inside, and I hated yeah. it. Absolutely, I absolutely, positively hated. I had to go back and rewatch the other ending just to erase the. Get original. it out of your mind. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Totally. Totally. Exactly. totally, totally, exactly. I agree. totally. I agree. Now, Rachel has another question. Go ahead, Rachel. She has a second question for you, sure. Jason. Oh sure. So um, you were talking about choosing Jordan and picking up the project, even though I've been bouncing around Hollywood a bit. And you know, hindsight twenty twenty, it was a great choice. Um, but what made you decide to take that chance? What you know, Jordan was known for comedy, not for horror. He hadn't directed before. What what was that decision like for you? In TV, we work with a lot of young, up and coming, new first time directors. A lot, tons, tons, and tons. Um, in features, we do much less so for reasons that are probably too long for this particular uh, Zoom uh, to get into. But Jordan, like I said, he was a first-time director in name only. He really wasn't a first-time director in any other way. He had no um, 
kind of traits of a first time director at all. Um, um, I don't, I, I don't look when we choose actors or directors or even writers, I'm not interested if they've done horror before. I'm interested if I admire their work. If I think they're yeah. great artists, we, the horror part I can help with. I, what I'm, you know, what I can't, I'm not an artist. I can't make a great compelling story that you want to see, but, 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 but if you <laughs> make a great compelling story, it has dark themes. I could definitely help make it scary. And, yeah. and so, so the drama in the script was so good that I really wasn't worried about. And also, by the way, I wasn't worried about it. Be, it turns out, you know, Jordan is a poor genius, so he didn't need my help right. scary either, turned out. But um, Jordan in particular, a lot of the filmmakers we work with, or like when we put Ethan in Sinister, he's like, I hate horror movies, but you know, I'll do it because we're friends. Jordan loves horror. Yeah. And he wanted to make it scary. A lot of our directors say they don't love it or they don't know it or whatever. But Jordan really is a huge, huge horror fan. So <clears throat> we, I was protected kind of on all bases. All right, well, thanks a lot, Rachel. Fantastic questions. Thanks for joining the conversation. Hey, before we get out of here, Jason, I want to find out from you, now that you've had some time to think about it, uh, there have been a lot of debates and theories about the sunken place. What does the sunken place mean to you? I think the sunken place for me is a place of powerlessness, a place where you feel, um, you know, your life has no impact and there's nothing you can do to get traction, which I think is just about the worst place one could ever be. Oh, great answer. Great answer. Now, of course, you're responsible for bringing Get Out to Life and you also produce Black Klansmen directed by Spike Lee, which ironically also won an Academy Award for writing because it won for Best Adapted Screenplay. That's right. Um, why do Black stories matter to you? Uh, black stories matter to me because they reflect our audience, you know, mo most importantly. Um, and I think um, the audience, whether they're Black, White, Latino, men, women, they want to see stories. Um, about characters that they can identify with, not exclusively, but they want to at least see some that are about them. And I think, um, you know, certainly until until pretty re recently, there the the storytelling didn't reflect our our audience is a minority white uh, and a, and a, and a minority male also. It's it's fifty five percent female, forty five percent male. So so when we look for our movies and our stories to tell, we try and find stories that, that, that reflect the experience of our audience. Well, thank you. I appreciate the conversation, but before we get out of here, I want to remind everyone, uh, thanks for watching the AFI movie club. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to Jason Blum about get out. And remember you can rent get out for free all week long. So thank you very much for that, Jason. Thank, thank you. you very much, Universal Pictures, and thank you very much, AFI. Just go to AFI.com to find out all the details on how you can rewatch or watch for the first time a horror classic, Get Out. And Jason, no sequel. No sequel. <laughs> no sequel. Although, no sequel, I promise. No, no sequel, please. <laughs> hey, it, it needs to be a classic that stands on its own until the end of time. All right, all right, all right. Hey, thanks a lot. Don't forget, AFI.com. Thanks a lot, Jason. Bye. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye.